Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Let's talk about Waterworld. <coughs> you know that's always the reaction I get? I mean, this film is known as one of the great all-time bombs. It was the most expensive movie made at the time, and it didn't even come close to making its money back. But is it really as bad as everybody makes it sound? Does it deserve all the bad press it continues to get even to this day? What's in this movie that just pisses people off so much? Aside from the obvious number one. Well, there's dangerous waters up ahead, let's see if we can get through them. This is Waterworld. So after we get the traditional Universal logo, with Earth still having no visible clouds, we take a quick glimpse into the future. The future. The polar ice caps have melted, covering the Earth with water. Those who survived have adapted. Ah, great, it's a trailer for another Al Gore movie. An inconvenient truth, too. Somebody listen to me. So we see that mankind has adapted into the Kevin Costner of blandness, Kevin Costner. We see him take a piss, put it through a machine, and proceed to drink it. There's a fitting metaphor for this movie in here, but I can't quite figure it out. And just to give you an idea how boring Costner's acting is, just look at this scene. He's actually in these shots. He hasn't left the frame. He just leaves such a small impact on the audience that you can't even see him. Huh, <laughs> that takes talent. He then comes across a drifter and makes some chit-chat. Well, I owe you then. No thanks. I got all the supplies I need. Two drifters meet, something needs to be exchanged. I know the code. Nothing's free in Waterworld. Hey, it's the motto the producers of this movie always said. But it turns out the Drifter stole his plant, and an evil band of water terrorists called the Smokers are out to get it. And now we see exactly what takes up the majority of time in this film. Stuff! Just... just stuff! Ooh, look at that stuff go! Have you ever seen so much stuff happening at the same time? Ooh, now he's spinning some stuff! That stuff must be important because that stuff allows him to do this stuff! Oh, look out for that stuff! Knock that stuff over so you can pick up that other stuff while you're busy trying to handle this stuff! Stop! 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 So he knocks out the other drifter's boat, and the smokers catch up with the drifter and shoot him. Which begs the question, why didn't they just shoot Costner? But let's leave the small plot holes for the bigger plot holes. He reaches a city that sort of looks like a paper mache toilet seat and sells a jar of dirt for a ton of money. He comes across Hulk Hogan's barber here as he's told about a map to dry land that apparently is tattooed on the back of a little girl. One more, make it two. Man, this rich will buy for a fellow of water, I'm sure. One. That's an interesting pair of boots you got. I'm confused. Is he trying to establish himself as the arch nemesis or trying to ask Costner out on a date? Have you ever had a fresh water bath? Why bag? are you talking to me? Just being friendly. Before Costner heads out, though, he's offered an Asian chick. That's nice. We can look to our own for impregnation, but too much of that sort of thing gets uh, undesirable. She's pregnant. You're going your way with all the supplies you need. You don't have anything. You're dying. That was a good read, Costner, but uh, why don't you try it once more and this time fucking care? No man stays out that long and he turns down a woman. He's hiding something. Maybe he's a smoker spy. Maybe he's gay. Did they not survive high water? So upon closer inspection, they find out that Costner is a mutant. Gills. Mutation! What are mutants in this world? Well, we're never given a full explanation, but apparently they're half-human, half-fish people that evolved over time. And everybody hates them. Um... Why? I mean, I know prejudice is a staple of mankind, but you have an apocalyptic world underwater and a guy who can breathe underwater! Fucking use him! You shouldn't be putting him in a net, you should be treating him like royalty! He can solve, like, a bajillion problems in this world and you're treating him like a criminal? What's wrong with these people? Seriously, what's with the hate against mutants? There are mutants out there with incredible powers. Okay, Robin. okay, I get the idea. So, because the really cool guy that can breathe underwater and has a lot of helpful elements to him has gills, I guess he must be destroyed. 
Therefore, in the interest of public safety, he is hereby sentenced to be recycled. Into what, Keanu Reeves? But suddenly the smokers attack to take over the city, led by an evil man named Deacon, played by Dennis Hopper. Monkey! Actually, something I never quite got is how come they're called the smokers? I mean, okay, I can see that everybody smokes, but why does that make them a terrorist group? Is there another evil organization out there called the Vegetarians? The Shopaholics? Or how about the deadliest forces of them all? The Trekkies? <laughs> Do you fall? All right, Costner, I want you to watch very closely what these people are doing. This is called giving a shit. You should try it sometime, and maybe your acting will improve. Okay, now this is turning into a water show. Just slap the Universal Studios Florida logo at the bottom and the advertising takes care of itself. Look out! They're about to do a human triangle! So an old man named Gregor accidentally pushes the lever that launches his hot air balloon that he had in his room. This forces him to leave his friend Helen and the little girl named Enola behind. So Helen and Enola have no choice but to free Costner and have him lead them out of the city. Dolphin this of course leads to, you guessed it, MORE STUFF! Oh look, he's pulling that stuff! If you start cutting that stuff, that'll allow you to start swinging on this stuff! Push that stuff, pull that stuff, look out for that stuff! Oh, I'm out of material! Uh, little girl, you take over! Push it! Go! Go! Push it hard! Now pull it! Stop! Hey! Can you steer? Can I trust you? Lady, you're on his boat! What's he gonna do, surrender? Can you steer? Can I trust you? No, you can't. What you gonna do about it? So he tricks one of the boats into firing at Dennis Hopper, which results in him losing an eye. But our heroes get away on Costner's boat as he shows his appreciation to Helen for saving his life. Kid, we've got to pitch over the side. What? It's better one of you dies now than both of you die slow. Our hero, everybody! When he's not busy killing kids, he spends his time stealing from charities and burning down puppy farms. You got another hour and a half with this guy, folks! Enola, go below. Helen tries to offer herself to him, but that will require him having an emotion, so he turns her down. Taking us to dry land. Killing's a hard thing to do well. It's not like acting. <laughs> so I guess her trying to kill him softens him up apparently as he decides not to finish the girl off. But she soon turns out to be a nuisance as she draws all over his boat and continues to pester him. I'm not afraid of you. I told Helen you wouldn't be so ugly if you cut your hair. After you talk all the time, storm when you're around. No, I Once again, our hero, everybody. Tired of hating the Nazis so much, why don't you try the main character of this film? There's plenty of jerk to go around. She can't swim! Wait, 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 wait. She can't swim. She's in a place called Waterworld, and she can't swim?! Isn't that kind of like being in the Antarctic and not knowing how to put on a coat? I mean, tell her something's going without saying! So Cosmo swings around and picks them both up. But before they could, I don't know, develop character, two of the smokers arrive and try to destroy them. That's a nice touch! That's them! By the way, that's Jack Black piloting the plane there. You'll remember him from such future disappointments as Gulliver's Travels. Hurrah! So the plane is stuck swinging around the boat as the pilot tries to cut the wire. Upset at her actions, Costner does the ballsiest thing he can think of. He gives her a haircut. I'm not even joking, but that's really what he does. Don't. 
ever touch anything on my boat again. Next time it'll be a perm with blonde highlights. BLONDE HIGHLIGHTS! He does the same thing to the girl, turning her into Haley Joe Osmond, just as they come across another drifter. I thought you all stopped for each other. Maybe he has some food! Jesus, lady, to pass a kidney stone on that line? Food! Food! They meet up with the drifter, who I swear to God is played by a perverted Robin Williams. Let yourself we her. I'm going here now, don't you? What you want for the women? They're not for sale. Are they a pair, or would you consider selling them separate? You're a woman. I, I, I want to buy your women, the little girl, your daughters. Sell them to me. Half an hour. Don't! Shut up. 45 minutes with the wee one. I like to do the talking, if you know what I mean. So just to backtrack, everybody, the most expensive film at the time included incest, child murder, and now pedophilia. How is it this film didn't connect with a mainstream audience again? But just as the drifter is about to rock her boat, Costner changes his mind and saves her. <laughs> I think it's safe to say this isn't worth any amount of fun! <laughs> Oh no, he painted his back red! That's just annoying! Nanuing in such sweet sorrow. So Costner goes to try and get some food by using himself as bait. He kills a... sandworm in the water, that's a bit of a paradox, as he finally manages to feed everybody. <laughs> I see dull people. You don't like my singing, do you? So Costner, rather sporadically, decides he does like the kid now and is going to show her how to swim. Put the water to your arms and legs, how to move. Go on down, hold your breath. So we get a good minute and a half of just the two of them swimming, which, after you introduce the idea of pedophilia in this world, is starting to look a little suspicious. Now, hey, I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying that once you drop that bomb, you drop that fucking bomb. Okay, so they come across another trap set by the smokers as they turn around and try to hightail it out of there. This looks like a job for, you guessed it. <laughs> Stuff 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 Get in. Well, what about Enola? She's on the air for what? Get in the water. It'll be all right. Oh, yeah, she'll be fine. Just ignore the fact that you just escaped the terrorists. They're most likely tracking you right now, and literally, you're not moving. Let's just put the idiot clock up there to count down what a dumb idea this was. So he drags her underwater in this safety bubble, only to show her that dry land is all washed up. Of course, you could make the argument that the air pressure would kill her, and if not, she'd probably run out of oxygen eventually, but like I said, let's keep it one plot hole at a time. And speaking of which, the idiot clock is almost up. How's Enola? What? The smokers got her? Well, if I didn't know any better, I'd say you two were idiots! They jump in the water and Costner breathes oxygen into her mouth, leaving the smokers to destroy the boat and take Enola away to try to figure out the map on her back. Both. You maniacs, you blew it up. Damn you, damn you all to hell. So as they sit there stranded, Helen asks Costner a question. When I offered myself to you? Why didn't you take me? Because you didn't really want me. Well, it's good to know he's an ethical savage. Trying to murder children, sell women, and drowning little girls is fine. But when a lady says no, he knows it means no. So while participating in post-boat burning, stepdaughter kidnapping, inevitable death sex, which let's be honest, is the best sex. 
the mother of all friggin' coincidences takes place. No, 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 Helen, up, up above you! What? <laughs> yeah, I guess he got that whole controlling the balloon so he can pick up people thing figured out. But it turns out other people survived as they band together and try to figure out what to do. There's land. It's right under our keel. None of it's dry anymore. Some is. I know there's been there. I know that now. I saw what she drew. <laughs> so that's why he's going out the river to find dry land. I don't care about dry land. This is ridiculous. <laughs> I don't even think he was talking about the plan. I think he was talking about Costner's acting. I don't care about dry land. I don't care about dry land. This is ridiculous. So Costner decides to go after Enola alone finding the smoker's ship, and being lucky enough to find a series of holes that just happened to lead right up the boat. Lucky, lucky. You've got your pet freak coming to rescue you. He's not a freak, and he can take you any time. He's killed dozens of people, and doesn't have any mercy or anything. He even kills little girls. He doesn't have any, so death can't find him. He doesn't have a home or people to care for. He's not afraid of anything. Men least of all. You know, it's pretty bad when a little girl has to be your spokesperson in a movie. It doesn't make the hero look especially tough. I mean, can you imagine if Samuel L. Jackson from Pulp Fiction had a kid as a spokesperson? His fro can block out the light of a thousand suns. His teeth can take out even the biggest of kahuna burgers. And his constant use of the N-word makes my mommy so angry that he's well worth the R rating. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Did I break your concentration? He's fast and strong with a big wind. He can hear a hundred miles and see a hundred miles underwater. He can hide in the shadow of a noon sun. Kevin Costner is so mighty that they say even blood the bear Joe can't defeat him. No, no, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. No, somebody else thought it up. No, no, no. It was a little girl. She's totally crazy. So Hopper hypes up the crew by showing them that he has the map to dry land. This encourages the crew to keep on rowing, which, let's be honest, looks unbelievably silly. But Costner comes in after the crowd has left to get his friend back. It's him. It is him. You guys are in so much trouble. <laughs> Thank you! Annoying little brat, can I see it again? God, that's satisfying. Can I see a cycle of that? Such I thought you were stupid, friend, but I underestimated you. You were a total freaking retard. I want the girl. That's all. Well, what on this screwed up earth makes you think that you're gonna get her? Hey, uh, just out of curiosity, um, why aren't they shooting him? Isn't this just giving him time to whip out a flare, light it up, drop it down a pipe, and blow up the entire ship? Yes, it is! Now, to be fair, this does lead to a very funny scene where the one guy who lives a very tortured life looking after the oil sees the flare drop. Oh, thank God. Okay, you gotta admit that's really funny. Don't just stand there, kill something! Was this your big vision? All right, show me the scene again. Thank you. So Hopper gets the girl to the plane as we finally get the showdown between Costner and Goldilocks here. <laughs> you should have stayed on the water. Well, wasn't that a thrilling build-up to an unbelievable letdown? So we see that Hopper is getting away with Enola on the plane. What's Costner to do? Let's get ready for start! God bless you, stuff. We love you. So Costner gets Enola to the balloon, but again, Hopper being the world's greatest shot, knocks her off. No! No! Enola! He and some henchmen try to get to her as Costner thinks of a plan, which leads to, and let's be honest here, one of the stupidest rescue scenes ever! Fly 
flying fuck bucket. This whole movie is bent on showing us all the technical aspects and exactly how it works, and yet the last big action scene comes down to a wily e. coyote scenario. Oh, and I just love how they happen to have the exact amount of bungee cord from the balloon to the water to pull this stunt off. What a bloody douche, man. What a bloody douche. So Gregor finally figures out the language on her back and figures out the way to dry land. And of course, when you know it, they eventually come across it. <laughs> Alright, I want to end this review, so... Insert Lost, Blue Lagoon, Swiss Family Robinson, Jurassic Park, and or Gilligan Island joke here. Get creative. So Costner, of course, says he doesn't belong in this world and decides to go back to the sea. I guess he prefers drinking his own piss. He says goodbye to the girl, gives the most non-caring kiss ever given to a woman, and sets out to let people down again in the postman. Whew! Okay, that's Waterworld, one of the biggest bombs of all time. But is it one of the worst movies of all time? Well, let's look at the bad stuff. Costner's a bore, there's a ton of little plot holes that do start to add up, and as far as the expensive movie at the time goes, yeah, I'd probably expect a lot more too. But for what it is, just a basic shoot 'em up action film, it's not that bad. The sets are a lot of fun, you really get an atmosphere for this world, Dennis Hopper is enjoyably over the top, and to be honest, I kinda like stuff. Watching the technicals of this world is really enjoyable. I like seeing how everything works and functions as it makes the world seem a lot more practical and real. But does that make it a good movie? No. But I don't see how that makes it an awful one either. Maybe in a way that's its worst crime. One of the most expensive movies of all time and it's just okay. It's not spectacularly bad or spectacularly good, it's just okay. For many moviegoers, simply being an okay movie is the biggest letdown. But for me, it simply means it's okay. Take what you will from that and decide on your own. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, I remember it, so you don't have to. One more time.